it was a, it was a fun time. I like the barbed wire boards the best. I do believe. I wish there would have been a little bit more with them, or when Moxley had his spot with it, he would have landed on it better. Yeah, that brings me back to uh, FMW. Yeah. I used to love watching FMW. I did like seeing Janela actually so, get tangled in it. That was cool. That's yes. always good. Mick Foley was good for that. The, the long hair mm-hmm. helps. Enjoy Janela has that. Whenever you're in a barbed wire match, when you get your long hair tangled in it, it just looks a little better. My, my only complaint oh, about the match is it felt like... Maybe Moxley thought he's too big to take a, a, a beating. Not that he had to lose, but he didn't take nearly as much punishment as Janela. And I get that. I agree. But Moxley hasn't been hardcore for a long fucking time, and the world knows it. We call him the PG version of Joey <laughs> Janela. Um, I, I, yeah, I agree that either Moxley felt he was too big for it, or that the elite felt he yeah, was too big Yeah, they want to keep him it. safe, not sure protect him. One. <sighs> Not sure which one. I agree. And with now that. we've got a six that man is... tag coming up soon with John Moxley, Joey Janela, and Havoc versus uh, MJF and a couple of other heels. I don't remember. It's good. Yeah, That's it going to be good. At this point, we should uh, remind everybody: Pasty is up three two. Pasty one. AEW fighter. Yeah, I'm good on these two. AEW ones, man. Out of six, you at it, least it, got it. Up. <laughs> you're you're owning the AEW. It's events. good. It'll balance out the year a lot better. Although I'm hoping now that Heyman's in the driver's me, seat, I should pick up some many. WWE ones here soon. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, best match of the night, Pacey. I put down John Moxley versus Joey Janela. Uh, I think I'm going to agree with you because it's the one I remember the clearest out of all oh, of it. Wow. I wanted to say the Elite okay. versus Lucha Brothers and Laredo Kid, but the more we talked about that, yeah. Uh, Moxley versus Joey Janela, though, is something I was very much looking forward to. And they did pull out some pretty decent stops. And Joey Janela was fucking awesome. Getting the shit kicked out of him and still flipping oh. off John Moxley and laughing at him. He's and how about the fucking that. beat down on Moxley afterwards by Kenny Omega in which Moxley just laughed about it? And that was a good throwback, Dude. though. That was a good yes. throwback. To, to where Moxley came out Tie and that shit up shit. In a Now you come back and fucked with him. I, I like that storytelling. Yes. That's good. That's what we need. That's hey, and we, we forgot want. to talk about Jabali trying to drown Michael Nakazawa in the pool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did. Or did we forget? Uh, or did we block it out? Um, there were, there were I, I will agree, there were two dumbest lines of the night. The one I want to point out is uh, right after the non-sanctioned John Moxley, Joey Janela match. And I I think it was either Excalibur or it was uh, Golden Boy. I don't remember which one it was, but he was like, they went through all that and it won't even go down in the record books. It's unsanctioned. Oh, shut the fuck up. All right, up. when this, when this pay-per-view goes to DVD, <laughs> I need to see that they that match is that not match on there. On there. <laughs> yep, they can't have the match because it was unsanctioned. All the replays have to have it cut off. You only could have ever seen it live. They have to take down all the yeah. YouTube videos. I just that was like, <laughs> oh, that's a very WWE line, super uh, WWE line. I mean, oh if it, if it counts like in an AEW sense, at least Joey Janela didn't get a loss against him. Cool, yeah, I'm down with that. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Shut up. It's still going right. on. Uh, and Pacey, you were right. They brought up another very WWE. Yep, line. and that's the hardest part of the ring. We already went the there. Part we the already ring. went there once. We didn't have to go there again. <sighs> Sick of it. Okay, Pasty, we are. We went really long on that. I knew we would. I didn't think we'd go that long. So it'll help that I didn't see the next one. Yeah. Yet? <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna rush. Through All right. This, okay? It's time for Just Ring of Honor. The best in the world. Results. Yes. Pre show, Roosh defeated Flip Gordon. I didn't watch it. We had Dalton Castle defeat Dragon Lee. Very good match. Not as good as I wanted to between these two guys, but uh, very good. Tag team match, C and Angelina Love and Mandy Leon, also known as The Allure, defeat Jenny Rose and Kelly Klein. Uh, at this point, Pacey and Mac are one and one. one. And Both one. Vo- voted for Dalton Castle. Um. 
should be two and two because we both voted for Dan Lewis. Uh, either way, um, Kenny King versus Jay Lethal was next. This was an amazing match. Everything you could think of, these two amazing athletes. Kenny King ended up beating Jay Lethal. It was really fun. We had a pure rules match versus uh, Jonathan Gershom versus Silas Young. This was actually the old pure title rules match. And they mentioned something about um, somebody still having the actual pure title. So I'm hoping they bring the pure title back. I was a huge fan of the pure title Actually, I have a DVD of every title change of the Pure Ch title. And um, they had specific rules. Not going to go over them here, but certain rules to where, like, um, there's a, you only have three rope breaks per match. And, in fact, if you, get, if you do things like a low blow or a closed fist punch, that would be a disqualification. You actually lose a rope break. So, at a certain point, you lose up all your rope breaks. If you're in a pin or a submission... You grab the rope, doesn't mean a damn thing. I always thought that it was kind really of cool. is that way in wrestling um, anyway. They just don't talk about it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Jonathan Gresham ended up beating Silas Young by submission. That was this was a really good match. I really loved it. Briscoe Brothers versus Eli Drake ended up being the uh, tag team partner for Nick Aldis. He is now exclusively with NWA. I love Eli Drake. I think Pasty, you said before you don't really remember. No, I love Eli Drake. Movies. Dummy, yeah. Oh, okay. I love the dummy okay. button. Sorry. He's awesome. I love Eli Drake. He's amazing. That's a great win. For I want him in WWE. I don't know why. Up. I just think he'd be a good heel in WWE. He could be great. ROH TV Championship match scene. Shane Taylor successfully defend against Bandito. This was an awesome match. Recommend going back and watching this, folks. We had a sick man tag team championship. Villain Enterprises kept their titles, defeating Lifeblood. Of course, Villain Enterprises is... PCO, Brody King, and of course the villain Marty Skrull, and Lifeblood consists of PJ Black and his cohorts Mark Haskin and Tracy Williams. Last, we had the ROH World Championship match. Matt Taven successfully defended his title against Jeff Cobb. Love Jeff Cobb. Jeff Cobb looked great here. Definitely was nowhere near the best match of the night. They need to get the title off Matt Taven. One of the best matches I've seen Matt Taven in, but I'm still not a fan of his. Jeff Cobb is what everybody wants Michael Elgin to be. He's got personality, he's got athleticism, and he's huge and can suplex like a motherfucker. Oh, that being said, Pasty, I put the best match of the night as Shane Taylor versus Bandito for the TV title. Love Shane Taylor. He does so much for such a big loke. And Bandito is just going to end up taking over the world pretty and soon. And I have to give my best night, uh, match of the night to the Briscoe Brothers versus Eli Drake and Nick Aldis. There you go. I you can do that. I'll allow you to do it. Um, I put this pay-per-view grade at probably, looking at everything on here, um, B-. minus. B- minus, and they're getting the minus because the main event was not as good as I wanted it to be. Okay. That should have been better. Moving on! Yes, strap on your cleats for the weekly Elite Dirt Sheet. Skate, skate, skate! On my teats. It was revealed that Cain Velasquez will make his in-ring debut at Triple A's Triple Mania. See... What the fuck does this have to do with the Elite Pasty? Well, he'll be teaming with Cody and Psycho Clown. One of Triple A's... Triple A's top baby face. One of Triple H's. <laughs> He'll be one of Triple H's top yeah. baby faces. To go up against the trio oh, of cool. Taurus, Texano Jr., and a surprise partner. You can always tell the gringos from the Hispanos when they say Tejano as Texano. <laughs> Look, continue yes. Tejano. The biggest hit about the identity of the surprise partner so far is that he has MMA skills. Chris Jericho? <laughs> also on the card, the Lucha Brothers and Laredo Kid have a chance to avenge their loss to the Elite in a rematch from Fighter Fest. Yeah, it will be. Cool. I'm excited to see that, potentially. You know what I think would be awesome? What if this AAA also involved CEO? And they find out that the uh, surprise partner, it was a typo. He he doesn't have skills in MMA. He has skills in MMOs. <laughs> 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 he, 
<laughs> he's just big on the multimedia online games. You know what I mean? He's he's a big guy in Fortnite. This motherfucker knows what he's doing. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, I just thought that was cute. <laughs> oh, Pacey. Um, speaking of Fighter Fest, though, in a post interview after Fighter Fest, Tony Khan revealed what he didn't like about last year's All In, which most people thought very highly about. He said, quote, there are two things I didn't like about All In. Jordan Grace getting punched and the penis druids. Um, I liked Jordan Grace getting punched just because I am big on equality with female and male wrestlers and everybody knows And that. I liked penis druids just because I'm big I... on male anatomy. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So I was happy to hear that Tony Khan also didn't like the penis druids. It, it made me feel <laughs> A lot of people seem to like them other than, like, WWE marks. Now, instead of beach balls at AEW events, everybody's going to wear penis costumes. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> start, just start throwing dildos around. Instead of throwing, instead of throwing streamers like ROH, they're going to start throwing dildos in the ring. <laughs> you get a dildo, and you get a dildo, and you get a dildo. <sighs> to be fair, he's not associated. They're stuck all over the walls in the sensory room. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Just a few hours after Starcast events revealed that WWE Hall of Famer Booker T would be appearing at Starcast Three, it appeared that wouldn't be the case. Who would have guessed? <laughs> he just signed a new extension with WWE. <laughs> Shuggy no Dougie way. Quack Quack. <laughs> With Booker releasing a short statement on social media indicating he will not be appearing after all. There has already been a great deal of speculation as to why this has happened. Ranging from WWE blocking the move after finding out about it to StarCast prematurely ejaculating the appearance prior to coming to terms on a deal. (laughs) Yes. It's interesting to note that Booker's Reality of Wrestling is co-hosting The Deep Impact Show in Houston. I see what you did there. <laughs> With Impact Wrestling tonight, if you're listening to it the day it drops. Yes. Just stop trying to get so, WWE guys to fucking go to StarCast. <laughs> right, it's, it's just not going to happen. You use your time in much better ways. Fuck. So, um, to play devil's advocate, the, the whole um, Deep Impact show... To be fair, reality of wrestling is its own thing. And yes, Booker is one of the owners of it, and he's the the face of it, but it is its own entity. And so WWE has no contractual obligations to it, and WWE can't tell it one way or the other what to do. They could persuade Booker in one way or the other. They could say, hey, Booker, we really don't want you to do, you know, that. But they, they obviously have no want some of this no Saudi money rights. without ever having to leave the country? <laughs> But they have no legal rights. But Booker is Booker T himself is physically under a WWE contract, and so they technically can prevent him from going to Starcast. So it is interesting to note that they're allowed to do an Impact show, but not Starcast. But again, to be fair, Reality of Wrestling is has no connection to WWE, even though a contracted <laughs> WWE guy owns part of it. If that makes any sense, maybe, yeah. maybe not. It's stuff. Um, it still is still shitty. shitty. Still shitty. Booker T isn't even a regular no. in WWE. Let him just go to start. Just get some promotion with these fucking. Do they realize how worse they look by not letting these guys go? When if you let one or two of them go to these events, that would really have some goodwill towards these re- these diehard wrestling fans that are boycotting My, WWE. Now I have a new question. Has Sam Roberts done anything at or around StarCast? Nope. What a fucking pussy. <laughs> I, I don't even what? listen to him I anymore. No. Nope. his show for nope. a long time. Since he no. grew the beard, He's since literally... he grew the beard, and I saw him on the pre-show, I'm like, uh. <laughs> he... he is, to me, he's basically, um, uh, oh, what He's was Monica Lewinsky, and Vince McMahon is uh, Bill that's... Clinton. Okay, I like that. I was trying to think of the uh, the guy that died and used to do all those. Oh, uh, Billy Mays. Shows. Billy Mays. Yeah, he's basically <laughs> WWE's Billy Mays. I like Monica Lewinsky like, better. He's not. He's, tech, he's, he's sucking not the hell out of contracted him. to them, but 
That's why he grew the beard. Vince wanted his balls tickled.